Here we are at day two of Design Automation Conference in San Francisco. I'm Nitin Dahad and... I'm Sally ward Foxton with E-Times. So uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, what we've seen and, and talked about today. Um, for me, uh, if I want to sum up the day, uh, the, some of the themes that I got from the, talk, the talks, the events and things that I went to were around more collaboration, more innovation and innovating how we innovate. Um, talent keeps coming up um, and then uh, we had a really good uh, panel on digital twins which I'll talk about in a minute and uh, then uh, 3D ICs and heterogeneous integration. What about you Sally? Uh, yeah I had a great time uh, today just the same as yesterday. Uh, on the theme of innovation I watched the keynote this morning yeah. uh, which is from IBM Quantum. Uh, Heiko Real gave a really interesting talk. Yeah. Still don't really understand everything there is to know about quantum. It's extremely complicated. Um, but she was able to confirm that we're definitely not at the point of quantum advantage, at least not yet. Um, she did talk a little bit about IBM's uh, roadmap for quantum, which is actually pretty aggressive. Um, they're currently on 433 qubits on a chip. This year they want to do 1,000 qubits on a one reticle chip. Wow. And then in the next 10 years, the plan is to get to 100K plus. Um, using multi-chip kind of layouts. Um, so yeah, very aggressive roadmap and I'm very excited to see what they can do. Wow, okay. Well, my, my day I think uh, consisted of going to the Applied Materials Technology Breakfast uh, at seven o'clock this morning. And, uh, and then we, we had my digital twins panel with uh, some, some people. But um, uh, the, the key message I think uh, from the Applied Materials, they made some announcements. They an announced um, a new uh, wafer manufacturing platform. They a new announced uh, a $270 million investment, uh, both corporate and um, government, uh, it, with ASU on a materials to, to fab um, facility at ASU, Research Park. Um, so, you know, it was uh, quite an interesting breakfast, very well attended, very packed. Uh, but I think uh, one of the key things that they're talking about, everybody's talking about, is you know, the path to a trillion dollar semiconductor industry. Yes. And um, the other two areas were obviously path to net zero and uh, path to talent. And they talked about how do we get to a million skilled workers in this industry by 2030. Yeah. So I think that was quite interesting. Um, collaboration was my first thing on the theme. And I think they talked really about, and I think came through with Intel Foundry Services later as well, was around um, industry growth will come from, you know, Collaboration, you know, the, the challenges are just too big for any one company. So they talked about inclusive innovation, working with acad uh, industry and academia, building up you know, research centers like the one they did in uh, India a couple of weeks ago. Um, so uh, they also announced this new Vistara manufacturing platform. So that was kind of um, like, this is great because you can do any sort of technologies, mix and match. You can do numbers of you know, wafers and uh, modules. So there was flexibility, intelligence, and saving energy. Very cool. Yeah, yeah very cool. Uh, picking up on a thread from yesterday about AI, I went to see a new to me company called Verify, spelled with AI at the end, of course. Um, really, really interesting company. Uh, they're using, the, well, the aim is to get to uh, 100x productivity on hardware and software verification. Um, and they use LLMs, large language models, mm. and reinforcement learning. Um, they, I mean, they use it all the way throughout the tools, but um, a, couple of w a couple of ways they use LLMs is, one is reading all these failure log files that yeah. you get. Yeah. Uh, it can be apparently 10,000 uh, failure log files for a person to go through. Yeah. What the LLM can do is basically read and understand what's in those log files, because it's basically text. Yeah. You can sort them out into buckets that look like similar bugs, and then you, it's easier for the person to go through and find the bugs. That was cool. But their new product, um, Test Guru, this is like a GitHub co-pilot, but for Verilog, yeah. um, which I thought was a really cool idea. I saw the demo as well it was super cool um, one of the things they do is to try and stop LLMs hallucinating obviously you don't want that when you're you're writing Verilog and um, they use several uh, models at once and they basically take a majority vote to try and get to like a grand truth wow. which was okay. a really interesting idea uh, that's I mean it's been fascinating and the, the amount of AI and LLMs it's just uh, I don't know you know where it's going but um, the other keynote this morning was from Prith Banerjee yeah. of ANSYS, ANSYS. And uh, he also came on my panel, uh, had a panel this morning on um, designing effective autonomous systems and digital twins. It was a one and a half hour panel, but you know, like people didn't want us to stop. Uh, it was, uh, we talked about everything, you know, from uh, sort of 
okay, the panel members were ANSYS, NVIDIA, uh, Siemens EDA, and uh, Instrumental. And one, one of the things I think I got from that is, if I was skeptical, if anybody was skeptical about digital twins before, after you've um, listened to the speakers, there's some real solid arguments for digital twins, but if you think about it, it's all around modeling, simulation, you know, providing models, for example, for autonomous vehicles, yep. which you, you couldn't do by crashing vehicles and stuff like that. I mean, I'm making that up, but that in, you know, it, it's, it's the, the kind of thing that, you know, You wouldn't be able twins, to get that data by yeah, crashing the vehicles. Exactly. And, yeah. um, yeah, it was a wide-ranging discussions, and uh, we, we talked a, a lot about you know, the dilemmas. You know, it, is it worth investing in AI and you know, doing that digital twin investment? And what's the balance, for example, if you're putting sensors on a on a pipe network? Uh, how about uh, using physics and, and and simulation to not put the sensor every six meters, but put it every 18 meters and do physics to approximate to, yeah. well, not, not approximate, to uh, get an estimation of where yeah. it's going to be in 18 meters and then yeah. correct that. So it's quite fascinating. Yeah, uh, I think there's a, we're going to see an awful lot more coming on digital twins uh, in the next few years. So yeah, definitely something to look out for. Uh, so the um, other thing I was going to uh, talk about the um, 3D integration and heterogeneous integration. Yes. So that came in the um, breakfast with applied materials, uh, but also came through with, uh, my, uh, I had a briefing with Cadence again, uh, se uh, second day, but this one I could talk about. So they, they, they talked about challenges of 3D ICs yeah. and uh, chiplets. And I asked them, you know, uh, how about, is would there be something like a chiplet library? And yeah. um, I think, they wouldn't be drawn on that, but I, uh, I asked, okay, what do EDA vendors need to do? So he talked about some of the things that they need to do to enable uh, the chiplet libraries and the things are like standardization. Um, and yeah, we talked about chiplet creation flows and, and yeah, 3D partitioning. Everybody's talking about, you know, obviously, with the disaggregation of the chip. Uh, so yeah, split it, yeah, if you've got a, a million transistors, whatever, yeah. a billion transistors, and yeah, just splitting it up and then yeah, putting it back together again yeah. with the, the right bits and yeah. the interconnects. So uh, Intel Foundry Services talked about their, their uh, work in that area. So for example, they talked about uh, packaging assembly design kit, which they re displayed for the first time here at Design Automation Conference, and the reference flows for its EMIB-based um, uh, uh, 3D ICs. So, uh, I think they were very much on ecosystem, you know, working with competitors to standardize chiplets, uh, being CAD agnostic. They announced um, with uh, all four EDA vendors uh, that um, the uh, Intel uh, 16 uh, is, is now yeah, with all, yeah, approved with oh, all the four vendors. Right. Okay, so yeah. Cadence, Synopsys, uh, Siemens EDA and yeah. uh, ANSYS yeah. uh, have all sort of qualified their, their the libraries onto uh, Intel 16. So um, it's been uh, quite interesting. Yeah, no, it definitely sounds like a, you've had a really good day. Yeah. Um, my favorite panel I saw today, uh, which was new to me, but probably won't be if you're watching this video, was about curvilinear design. Oh, yes, I wanted uh, to go to that. It's like this old chestnut. I know it's been around for a while, but some of the stuff was a little bit before my time. So I definitely learned a lot. Um, I think the panel, you know, all of them, I uh, definitely think curvy, curvilinear design shows promise. Um, you can make shorter wires, fewer wires, save area. Um, but I think the, the gist of it is basically the EDA companies need to build some tools for it. <laughs> it's going to be the, a big challenge. And what does a curvy make? Uh, did, it, did it make sense at all? Or? Yeah, it's like, uh, well, one of the things is if you're trying to make rectangles and Manhattan shapes, uh, you need this comp Com complicated computational orthography to make these masks. Mm. Curvy shapes are actually much easier to make, so okay. it's a lot more manufacturable is one of the benefits. Um, but yeah, any curvy wires, like they can go straight to the straight to the target. It, you know, it makes the wires shorter and uh, fascinating. the uh, shapes are easier to make as well. So, so um, just uh, not from here, but Kevin Singer, uh, who's the CEO of Singer Vehicles in Los Angeles, talked about uh, using 3D printing to print uh, to create components for vehicles and yeah and vehicle axles and things like that but in a biological shape to make it rather than square and yeah, okay. yeah to make them actually uh, ideal for those particular functions yeah so actually it makes sense I think it's interesting I it kind of dawned on me as I was watching the presentations that uh, we actually jump through a lot of hoops to make these square shapes we exactly. have these complicated approximations and we don't actually really need to do it it makes DRC easier and there are a lot of other benefits but yeah technology needs to catch up a little bit 
Right. So, uh, I mean, that's it from today. But tomorrow you are doing quite a lot. Yeah, so tomorrow tell us about uh, it. I have a presentation uh, tomorrow morning with Ian Cutrus. Uh, if you're here, it's at the DAC Pavilion 1015. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, AI hardware architectures. I have two panels that I'm moderating tomorrow afternoon here in the T-Cube Theatre on the first floor. One's about AI architectures. The other is about uh, chiplets and getting to Zeta scale uh, for supercomputers. So should also be a really interesting one and some great panelists too. So definitely check that out if you're here. Well, I mean, that'd be fascinating. So uh, if you're watching this and you can be here tomorrow, please be there. Yeah, be there or be square. <laughs> Absolutely. So until tomorrow, we, uh, this is goodbye from me, Nitin Dahad. <laughs> it's goodbye from me, Sally Ward-Foxton, reporting live from DAC. Thank you.